and uh, while we have the opportunity here, let's uh, go ahead and uh, welcome in former Georgia head coach Suzanne Yachlin, who is uh, kind enough to uh, join us here on the air. And, uh, Coach, thank you for uh, taking some time to sit down with us today. You're welcome, Kevin. It's great to be here as a fan tonight. A little bit uh, different role for you, I'm sure, uh, watching a regional as uh, Georgia has uh, captured 21 regional titles in, in your tenure, and they're uh, looking for number 22 here. But UCLA has been an absolute juggernaut wire to wire. And uh, as we will uh, continue to uh, show our viewers at home uh, the routines here for NC State and West Virginia, let's look back at uh, some of the moments here from the uh, first three rotations. Let's begin by talking about UCLA, who's okay. uh, out right. in front right now. They opened on floor, uh, then went to vault, uh, matching 49 fours right there, and then their best uh, rotation so far on bars, 49-4-2-5. No chinks in the armor right now for the defending <laughs> national champions. I'm sure you've seen it time and time again. This is a team that always sees seems to round into form when the postseason rolls around, and they're doing so today. Well, they absolutely do. You know, I had an opportunity to have lunch with uh, Valerie Condos yesterday, Valerie, Valerie Condos Fields, and she said, you know, this team's a, they can be a train wreck or they can win the national title. She really feels that if they put it together, that they will be a contender this year for the national title, right up there with Florida and Alabama and Oregon State, that they have the talent and the depth. And after watching them today, and this is my first time seeing them live this year, they definitely have what I think is the ingredients for a national championship team. One of the things I always look for is the fourth and fifth score. You know, what are the athletes in the fourth and fifth position scoring? Is it, is it a big drop-off? Because you can beat a, lot of, beat a lot of teams with those scores. And UCLA does not have that drop-off from any of their athletes. They're all, you know, at least that 985, there, there are no low scores at all in the lineup. And what I really like also are the big guns, the big guns at the end of the lineup, doing big gymnastics, big skills, and executing well. Brittany McCullough was absolutely fantastic on floor exercise. I mean, you could walk underneath her full twisting double tuck. I noticed she changed it from a piked full twist, a full twisting double back to a tucked one. I know she had some problems with the pike, so that was a good move on the coach's parts to change that. And the choreography, you know, it just continues to amaze me how Valerie can come up with different choreography every year. It never looks the same. It's just so artistic and it's really a step above most other, you know, other routines. It's not just the choreography. They have the athletes that can do the, the artistry. They have the flexibility and they really truly perform on that event. And they definitely stand out above anyone else on that event. That's where I really felt like they really shined. Faulting, you know, I think they could have even scored higher. Tawny, uh, you know, she did the round off back handspring half turn front pike like Courtney Coupets used to do. Um, stuck the ball 9925. I mean, I really think that could have gone 9975. It, 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 it could have been a 10. I mean, it looked like some of Courtney Coupets' 10s that she did. Great vaulting. And actually, in a, sub, in a couple places, I thought they could have been scored a little bit higher than what they did. And they did total of 49-4. Yeah. So outstanding on bars. Um, uneven, I mean, on vaulting. On uneven bars, they looked great there, too, as well. Sticking dismounts. You know, everyone except for Sam Peshek hit that bar lineup. And Sam came off, you know, with a smile on her face. She knew that the team had five hit bar routines, and she was okay with her mistake. Let go of the bar a little bit early on the double layout and came out short. But overall, like you said, they, they are on a roll. Every single event, a 49-4 or higher so far with balance beam left. Yeah, and that's tough to beat right now. And uh, beam has been something of a, a mixed bag for UCLA this year, but they have uh, built up a pretty nice cushion. As we look uh, now, talking about the second seed, Georgia, uh, a, a slow start resembling uh, something uh, like the SEC championship two weeks ago where Georgia opened on floor, went below 49, and, and we've seen uh, Georgia round back into form here on uh, floor and vault going 49-2 and 49-3-2-5 right. uh, after that bounce back. You know, personally, I was really disappointed with balance beam. Anytime you hit five routines and you don't break 49, you're competing tight. When you have the talent that, that Georgia has on the balance beam with Tanella and Mara, Worley, McComb, I mean, this team when you hit five routines, should always be scoring above a 49. But they were competing tight. Starting on bounce beam, here's a team that didn't qualify to the national championships last year. You know, starting on the event where there's the smallest margin for error, they just competed scared. And you could see it. You know, they hit, which was great. I mean, no, they didn't have to count a fall. But too many nine sevens, you know, for me on that event. And I know that they're capable of so much more than that. It was really, really nice to see Shayla Worley put together a hot, hot beam routine. I've said all along that Worley is an athlete that needs to be putting up the big scores. She needs to be scoring 9-9 on every event that she's doing. She was recruited to do that, and she needs to turn those lights on and, and start putting up the big numbers. And she did a beam routine that was flawless until right at the dismount. And once again, she has trouble with that round-off double twist. That foot slid off the side. You know, when you're thinking about turning before you've ever finished the round off, usually there's a problem. 
This time, though, the knees did not go down. She saved the fall, which was, you know, great. And I know it was a sigh of relief. And so she ended up scoring a 9.725 fall, instead of a fall, which was, you know, really, really, you know, good that she was able to do that. I noticed with Tanella that uh, Jay Clark and staff took out her side summy at the end of her beam routine. Good, smart decision. She misses that a lot. Um, she, you know, they needed to hit beam and they needed to make sure that they did. And they had Lindsay Cheek back in the lineup. That was a gutsy move on Jay's part. She has been out of practice since the SEC championships with that sprained ankle. Did not expect her to do beam at all. As a matter of fact, I think it said in the paper today that she would only be competing vault. Right. And it was nice to see her up there. She is definitely the one that needs to be competing beam for Georgia. But you could tell that she didn't have the numbers. And that side arrow, I think it was the side arrow at the end of the routine. Where she, where she had the fall, and that was disappointing. And then, of course, four more people have to stay on, so that's always tough. But overall, you know, it's really good to see Georgia start out with no falls, no mistakes, and they sort of took a sigh of relief. You know, it was like, okay, we got this finished. Let's head to floor. I think sometimes you, you and I, when we sat down last week uh, to preview the entire regional uh, for georgiadogs.com, we talked about uh, the rotation. And, Beam, you mentioned smallest margin for error, and it, it seemed like Georgia, we started to see them look like Georgia once they got out of the way. I, do you think in, in some sense you've had teams obviously start everywhere on, on each of the different rotations. Do you think that sometimes there's too much emphasis when you start on beam about not falling on that first rotation and it, and it prevents you from competing free necessarily? Well, I mean, you know, I don't know what Coach Clark and, and Julie said to the, the team. Of course, you know, you never want the focus to be on what you don't want to do. It's always always want to continually emphasize and say and, and contemplate and verbalize what you do want to do, you know, whether it's get your arms up or set for your direction. You don't want to talk about results. You don't want to talk about, okay, we want a stick. You want to talk about arms up, set the direction. Then the stick will be there. And coaches that coach results are the ones that usually do not have too much success. So if you're talking about falling, yeah, I mean, that's obviously a big mistake. I know that the Georgia staff would not be doing that, but it's in the back of your head always that this is a difficult event. Personally, I think most athletes love getting it out of the way. The pressure builds as the competition continues. Um, it's always more tense at the end. This is a qualifying meet. We've got to remember that. You know, in the, in the years past, Georgia, yes, we won a lot of regional titles. But for Georgia this year, and every year, it's a new year. And you have to look at this as a new beginning for the Georgia team. They did not make it to the national championships last year with a new first-year head coach. They have a second-year head coach that's building a program. And you can't, Georgia can't rest on the laurels of what it did in other decades in the five championships in a row. That's history. No one cares about it right now except Georgia fans. And the only thing that's important is qualifying, starting a new trend, starting a new tradition of Georgia making it to the championships every single year. With that said, you compete beam, you get it out of the way, and yes, absolutely, floor exercise was probably the, one of the best rotations of floor exercise I've seen Georgia do the entire year. Well, yeah, you look at how floor and vault have been, and there may not be as many 9-9 nine, nine scores as we've seen in a rotation uh, from Georgia this year, but nothing has been low. You look at floor, everything was 9-8 or above. Georgia dropped that 9-7-5 for Hillary Morrow, and the scores, they were all over the map. She did get a 9-9 nine, nine from one judge, but everything that Georgia counted was 9-8-5 or above. So the scores have been kind of tightly packed for Georgia, but it's been a, a fairly consistent effort. And you look at the way Georgia started on vault. If Cat Hires can give you a 9-8-5 in that first spot in the vault lineup, that I think is typically a great harbinger of things to come for Georgia, starting off with a, a, a pretty big number right there. Absolutely. You know, I want to go back to floor for a second. Starting mm -hmm. with Shayla Worley on floor, and by far one of the most artistic floor routines on the Georgia lineup. She and Cassie McComb have the best combination of artistry and dance and presentation. But for her to compete on floor, in with the two and a half twist, which she has not done all year. And so that was a, another gutsy move. But it was one that needed to happen because Georgia needed to be thinking, we're going to Cleveland and Shayla Worley needs to be in this floor exercise lineup. And she needs to get one under her belt. She needs to practice the floor routine with the two and a half in. And because it needs to be there if Georgia ever wants to have a chance to go into the Super Six, they got to have all the guns in there and anyone that they can't go safe. They can't compete safe for just consistent routines. They've got to go with the athletes that can potentially put up the higher scores. And Shayla's one of those athletes. And she got a 9-9 you know, nine -nine from one of the, the judges on floor. I mean, I honestly felt like if she wasn't first in the lineup, she would have scored higher. That was a beautiful routine and a great start. And it really just it got the whole team so excited. You could just see that. They were so excited to have Shayla back in there and to hit that routine. And even Krista Tonella, who was sitting out, was right in there for her friend, right in there for her teammate, who she knows can put up a big score for the team. And it was just 
it was a great rotation for Georgia. Well, I think made more impressive by the fact that Shayla hasn't competed floor since the Florida meet, which feels like ages ago right now. So to be able to come in and on more or less an hour's notice uh, be subbed into the first spot on that floor lineup after going fifth on beam, she she had to have her head right there, and that's a that's a. A dicey situation always being first trying yeah, to, to be yeah. the pace setter to set that tone, and, and she was up to the task. Yeah, but, you know, she was subbed in as far as you know because you saw the lineup and you saw it was changed and she was subbed in. But, you know, I talked to Coach Clark yesterday and the day before, and Shayla had great workouts all week. He actually asked her and said, you know, if I put you in on floor, can you hit this routine? Can you hit this two and a half at the end? Because you're not competing with the double full last pass. And she said, I can hit it. I can hit it. And, you know, so in his mind, he was planning to. He probably told Shayla, I want to watch you warm up first before mm -hmm. I change it. But in the back of his mind, he was planning to put Shayla in unless she did something that would keep her out. And that was a good move. Georgia needs Shayla Worley on three events at the national championships. And, and again, I don't look at this as just a qualifier. I look at this as a step towards Cleveland. And there were some lineup changes made today that absolutely needed to be made if Georgia stands a chance at getting back into the Super 6 this year. I'm not even saying going to, to Cleveland because they're going. <laughs> and, uh, and going to, to vaulting, like you said, Cat hires. I, I, you know, I moved my seat and sat right over in front of vaulting. And it was just a pleasure to watch the Georgia vaults. They were high. They were explosive. They came off the table. Their heads were above the height of the table, which is your, what you're looking for when they complete the twist, that they're above the height of the table. And there were a lot of really solid landings. The only really weak landing was Hillary Morrow, who hopped off to the side, and she got the 975. The judges did a great job of scoring, um, you know, the vaulting event, except for Hillary. You know, that was pretty crazy because one judge had a 9.9 and another one had a 9.6. I'm like, how can you see it that different? I, <laughs> yeah. I don't understand that. But the 9.75 average, I think, was correct for that vault. Um, but it, it was the throwout score. And like you said, George is not counting any scores below a 9.8. Uh, on vaulting or on floor exercise. So it's a good meet for Georgia. And with that said, obviously they have the uh, bye right now is that uh, we have just a minute left in the uh, touch warm-up. So uh, before we get ready to uh, call the routines for uh, rotation number five here, uh, your expectations uh, for Georgia on bars wrapping up. You already uh, made the proclamation that they'll be heading back to Cleveland with the top two finish <laughs> here. So uh, how do you expect to, uh, to see this one wrap up for Georgia on the uneven bars? You know, I've always felt sporting events are about momentum, and Georgia has a lot of momentum right now. They, they're not concerned that UCLA is going to beat them. Them. They're just concerned with what they're doing, and they know that it's enough to qualify to Cleveland. They've got the momentum. They should have the confidence. Bars is probably Georgia's best event. So I, I really feel like a good 49-2, 49-3, um, you know, would be a, a, a good score, one that you would expect from Georgia on bars. Anything above a 49-3 would be an exceptional competition for them. But, you know, with Kat Ding and Worley and McComb and, and Nuccio, I mean, Nuccio and Ding both average above a 9-9. So they've definitely got the guns and the athletes on this event that could put up the 9-9 scores. And the judges have shown, uh, as they've already done with UCLA, that they're willing to score good routines with stuck dismounts 9-9s. Well, we'll see how it pans out for Georgia. And, Coach, thank you so much for uh, taking the time. We appreciate okay. you joining us here. Thanks, Kevin.